I did not win my first major championship until 1987, but in that year I won virtually everything, including the world championship. I retained my title last year and hope to achieve a hat-trick in the coming season. Signed, John Lund. But is he one, two or three? The panel must tell me. Questions and answers. Don't forget two jokers in the pack who will try and deceive. You've got until the hooter sounds. No demonstrations. Let's start this end this time with you, Roy Hud. Right, number one. Where, do you, where are the current World Champion Stock Car races, uh, Championships going to be held this year? Coventry. Coventry. Are they always held in this country? Yes. They are. Number two. What, when you build a car... What do you build the car from? Lots of different cars? Yes, lots of different cars. So the first one you built when you were... When you were... What age was it now? Well, I uh, built my first one in 1976. 1976. Hmm. And what, did you, what cars did you use to build that with? Um, there were commercial axles off of Morris Commercial, and all the rest was homemade. I see. Um, number three, where are the championships going to be held next year? Well, they're commonly... <laughs> Thank you, Roy. Barbara. Number one, how many, how many people do you actually have in, in your organisation? I mean, if you wanted to go to a race, how many people would, would go with you? That depends on how many of the lads are available. Um, four, Is usually. That, are they mechanics and yes. people? Um, number two, where, how far afield do you actually race? In, um, geographically, I mean. All over the country, really. Um, the furthest south we race is Northampton and the furthest north is in County Durham. Those were, uh, are those specific tracks you go to? Uh, Northampton and Aircliffe in County Durham, and then there's others in between. Do you ever go... Right, Bob Wellings. Number one, what's the most common car used in stock car racing? They're all home-built. But isn't there a popular one? I mean, one time there was a Ford Pop many years ago. No, they're all home-built by the drivers, usually. And is stock car racing in decline? in popularity or is it doing it's holding its own is it i thought it was in... i thought number two was in decline no i think over the last few years it's, it's uh, improved and would you agree that there isn't a car that people would would go for in the states it might be a, a chevrolet or something isn't there something that people go after a ford zodiac or something like that no most of the cars are home built perhaps they, they all use the same engine yeah what's the worst um incident that you have had number three well it's a remarkably safe sport actually a safe sport, he safe says. Sport. Kathy Taylor. Number three, do you have to be fit for this game? Relatively fit, yes. How do you keep yourself fit? A lot of jogging, a little bit of weight work. How about number two, what do you do? Uh, just keep active, really. You don't do any specific fitness training? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> number three, is it, are you a stock car racer in your hobby time or is it a full time thing? No, it's part time. It's a hobby. What do you do to earn a living? I'm a farmer. How about number two, what do you do to earn a living? I'm a farmer. Number one, what do you do? I'm a farmer. You're also a farmer. Well, that's, <laughs> that's very handy. Farmers. Do you have to keep fit, number one? Yes. Uh, it, it, stock car racing is not a professional sport. No. Right, it's make your mind up time now for our panel. Why did you have a go at home as well? We are looking for John Lund, world champion stock car racing driver. I wonder, is the real John Lund number one? Number two, or number three? Panel, tell me. Roy Hudd, tell me. Who isn't, who is telling the well, truth? Well, now, it's interesting, this one, isn't it? Because, uh, you, know, um, you know, they try and fox you on this programme, don't they? Yeah. With props and <laughs> funny <laughs> costumes. But well, they've all got the same costumes. But number three, you see, is wearing glasses. I wouldn't think that's a very good thing for a stock car, um, a, you know, driver to wear. Or, and they are real glasses. If you look through, you can see they're proper they're lenses in there. So. I thought they might be fakes. Mm. Number one, he's a bit too smooth, you know, a bit too smooth for my liking. Ducky. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most genuine chap is number two, and I think he's the fellow. Number two. Barbara. Well, I think that number... I, I always think that stock car racing, you would have to be very flamboyant. Obviously, it seems that you would be flamboyant to do a sport like that. Now, I think probably knowing this show what it's like the <laughs> quietest chap has got to be it i'm going to go for number two as well yeah. number two as well <laughs> lovely two for two that's, Bob Willings. Uh, yes that's very interesting um 
I was looking at I was looking at number one's eyes, which are very clear and sharp and piercing. And I don't think you need very good eyes uh, for driving. But um, I'm not just copying lovely Barbara, but I think people who do heroic things and quite dangerous things are often quietly spoken. Given the geography lesson that we got and the kind of quietness of number two, I also go for number two. Number two. Kathy? Well, before uh, we did the show, we were told we had to go with our first feelings, so... Um... Well, you don't my, have to. Well, you can go no, with I'm your last to, if my, you want to. My, uh, all I'm going to... I'm just working up as a, an excuse as to why I'm going to go for number two as well, actually. Um, <laughs> I think that you do have to be pretty fit for this sort of game. But this, So I think if you didn't do it, I think you would think the same as me, and you would say, oh, yes, I go, I'm going running, and I do weight training and everything. Number two is so nonchalant. Oh, well, I, you know, just sort of keep active. In actual fact, a farmer's going to be fit anyway. Uh... I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> well, I'm going to go for number two, baby. Number two. <laughs> number two. So all four of them have gone for number two. I've never heard anything so silly in all my life. So will the real John Lund, world champion stock car racing driver, please be upstanding? It's number two. I may be wrong, but I think it's the first time in what's been quite a long series that the panel has got all four correct, or all four of them have been correct, and I'm really quite heartbroken about it. <laughs> but, but our imposters did try so hard. Imposter number one, what is your real name? Bob Giles. And what is your occupation? I'm a clergyman. Not another. <laughs> and, and our second imposter, what is your real name? Uh, Clive Everett Allen, and um, I'm also a clergyman. <laughs> So, <laughs> so what, what that means, of course, well, I don't know, you see, what yeah, it, this, what, this isn't uh, uh, the programme, it's, it's the epilogue, this isn't it? <laughs> what it does mean is that one-to-one -one in just a few moments is going to uh, comprise four clergymen, which has all sorts of fascinating possibilities. But in the meantime, John Lund, the real John Lund, world champion stock car racing driver, we have a photograph of you, John, with your world championship car. Can you win a lot of money? No. <laughs> and it's an expensive sport. What does a yeah, car it's cost? Quite expensive. Um, well, if you build a car yourself and do everything yourself, it's really your time that's yeah that you could count as. Expensive. In a word, going for the world championship hat trick this year, you're going to do it. Well, I'm going to try very hard. We wish you the very best of luck, John Lund, ladies and gentlemen. Well played.